So Luke Bowert coming into the ring from Fighting Fit Jim. Never a wise idea to jump over, climb over. He's lucky. I saw a fight finish before it even started. The chap tried to jump and over yeah. the top ring and dislocated his shoulder. It might have been this. Was that? Uh, I was at a show where I fought and a guy did that and he got he was hanging upside down from the ropes. That was at Concord. It was it was yes. a Master Toddy show. Yeah, I, I, I it was budgy. I was fighting. I was fighting <laughs> the main bout. Yeah, I remember. Oh. Josh Redpath from Factory. He's coming. Game of Thrones music, so he's got all the fans on his side now. Okay, Josh Redpath from the Factory. Interesting hairstyle as well. Not that I've got any room to talk. <laughs> this fight's at 60 kilos, five one and a half minute rounds. I think one of them's got certainly got a height advantage, don't you think, Phil? Uh, just a little bit, yeah. And I think that air style's giving him another two or three inches <laughs> on top of that as well. well Josh, uh, Josh looks like a, uh, a long, rangy fighter. Let's see if he brings that into play. Jabs yeah. and teeps. Powerful leg kick to open with. Well, Josh isn't wasting any time. No. Strong punches. Luke needs to get out of that corner. Oh, nice top knee there from, from Luke. But uh, Josh is relentless in his pressure. Luke starting to land with his own combinations now. At the moment, it's uh, working more in Josh's favour because of his uh, height advantage. But uh, Luke's, Luke's coming forward and staying pretty strong as well. Well, he's certainly the busier fighter, throwing a lot of knees there. Yeah. Weren't having a huge amount of causing a huge amount of damage, but he was throwing them and throwing more than his opponent. I think the problem I saw there in the clinch with uh, with Luke, uh, sorry, Josh, is the fact that when he got a clinch, he lowered his. His, his head right down, down, yeah. Which is making himself same height as his opponent, then he wants to make it harder on his opponent, keep his body upright more. Well, Luke's uh, weathered the storm in that first round. He's, uh, he's answered fire with fire. We'll see if he's going to step it up in this second round or if Josh is going to keep pouring it on. Oh, nice right hook there by Luke. I think Luke's bringing it into a a more physical fight, he's, he's trying to rough up his opponent when they're in the clinch. Luke really needs to capitalise, he, he could really uh, make a big impact in the clinch, he just doesn't seem to be committing to it. Yeah, I think also, um, if you notice with Josh, when Josh holds him in the clinch, He's using those elbows to make sure that uh, Luke can't move forwards and he's catching those knees. Josh is throwing there, he's had more success. Forgive me, Luke. Josh is breathing heavily now yeah, at the end of that second round, shaking his head. Yeah, it doesn't look good that he's shaking his head, that's not looking, not looking uh, very good at all. 
Yeah, the feeling if Luke presses this round, it could be a big one for him. He certainly did a lot better in that second round, didn't yeah. he? And this is what we see many a time, especially in a five-round fight. You'll see somebody in the first two rounds doing really well. And then the cardio starts fading, and then the other person takes over. And it's those last three rounds which should tend to be more important in, in a tie fight. Josh opening up with a kick again, but Luke straight in clinches, trying to sweep his opponent, gets him down. A good takedown. Good demonstration of control there, demoralise your opponent as well. He's straight in, he's really roughing up Josh now. Yeah, exactly what he needs to be doing. Really impose his will on him. Oh, he's dragged down. Oh, very lucky there. Got to his feet too quickly before the ref could get in there, and it almost caught a knee to the face. Luke's using his strength in the clinch, but he needs to be throwing those knees. Yeah. He's doing that now. As you said, Josh negates his, his reach and height advantage by putting his head so far down. Yeah, he does. He puts his head down. If you notice, he, uh, he places his elbows. Oh, he's caught him with a nice right hand oh, there. Good. Backed him up. I think it's the pressure of uh, Luke. Pushing forward and the fatigue in Josh that's really showing. Yeah, Josh, yeah, Josh looks very tired. Really blowing now. Past the halfway point, two big rounds left. Luke sat in his corner, he's taking the stool between every round, really getting that oxygen into the lungs, getting rid of that fatigue, listening to his trainer. Got Josh's corner telling him he's got two minutes. And he's looking very, very tired. Ever there was a time for a fighter to put the pedal to the metal, it's now for uh, Luke. Luke straight in with uh, some strong boxing. He's boxing in the clinch though, he needs to knee. Yeah, he's not getting, he's not scoring. Josh landed all, some he? nice knees there. He may have got thrown to the floor, but he's throwing the knees in the clinch. He, he's scoring. Yeah. Oh, a nice knee though there from Luke. You know, Josh has got good instincts. He's throwing the knees every time he clinches up. Luke's just a little bit slow off the mark. But his, his physical control of this round is uh, evident there. Very Throws strong. his opponent to the ground again. Josh is looking really tired now as well. It's almost like you... you oh, he's landing some solid punches there. Luke just needs to maybe perhaps take a step back. Yeah. Look for where he needs to land. Very, very strong round there for uh, Luke. I think Josh were lucky there that that bell sounded. They were looking a bit wobbly near end. I think that wasn't the only bell that got rung in that round. <laughs> yeah. But you know, credit to him. Credit to him. He's, yeah, he's, still, he's still in this fight. One round left. Some strong words from Josh's corner, from his trainer. As you said, Phil, it's, it's like a story, isn't it? The first two rounds, and then it changes after round three. Yeah. That's what I like about fighting. It's like the Rocky films, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you see the underdog game beating them first two rounds, and then suddenly the, the course changes, then the under, underdog starts winning. It's the biggest lesson you get from these fights, isn't it? That win or lose to one side, it's that willingness to carry on. Yeah, it is, yeah. 
to battle through to try. Yeah, you've got both to fighters are certainly doing that. Yeah. Neither one wanted to touch gloves. Luke's drilling to the body there, but I think he needs to step back and yeah. pick his shots. He's got to get some knees. He's, he's landed, landed a nice right hand now. Josh is wobbling. He needs to step back and pick his shots. Yeah, because his man's there to be finished. Yeah, Luke, Luke what, the problem is Luke's forgetting to score as well. Yeah, even though he's taking some heavy shots, Luke's, uh, sorry, Josh is scoring with those knees. Yeah. Both eyes looking tired now, but still, still Luke's the stronger of the two. Yeah, but Luke's boxing again in the there clinch. Is, he yeah. needs to be kneeing. Yeah. I think, I think because he's tired as well, he's forgetting. He's just forgetting about scoring. And I think he's just trying his best to hurt Josh. And unless those punches are having devastating effect, they're not going to score more no. than the knees. Be interesting to see how this is scored. In terms of damage control, it's certainly Luke. But he, I mean, Josh is almost out on his feet with fatigue there. Yeah. Good victory there for Luke Bowert. Really good fight by Josh as well.